There's an old saying in the real estate world, would you rather be the big house in the crappy neighborhood or in the cheap seats, but in the fancy neighborhood? That's the concept we have to think about today, but not for real estate, rather, can we apply it to cars? Okay, so how exactly would one apply this real estate concept to the car world? In reality, we've already been doing this for decades. Think about this question. Would you rather have an E-Class with an eight-cylinder or an S-Class with a six-cylinder? To answer the question today, we're going to look at an S-Class with a six-cylinder. In this, it's not just a box standard six-cylinder, it's the Mercedes mild hybrid system that starts with a three-liter inline six that's turbocharged, and behind that is an integrated starter generator motor that forms the basis of the 48-volt electrical system. Behind that is a nine-speed torque converter automatic, and it drives only all four wheels. In terms of output, 429 horsepower and 384 four pound-feet of torque. As we've discussed in many of these Mercedes mild hybrid episodes, there is an additional 21 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque on offer. I will leave you with two key points. Number one, less moving parts. Mercedes-Benz has designed their system to not have an accessory drive because the integrated starter generator motor that sits behind the engine takes up all the functions of the things that usually hang off the accessory drive and drag the engine, which also happens to net a couple of other benefits First stop would be fuel economy. I know that is humorous when discussing a vehicle that is 208.2 inches long, but here, 21, 30, 24 combined, that is 5 MPG better than the S580 in all figures. Then there's the performance figures, and here you would think there would be a significant delta. Believe it or not, 0 to 60, 4.8 seconds? Zero to 60 in the S580, 4.7, so not a huge delta at all. And then VMAX, it is exactly the same, electronically limited to 130 miles an hour. It's an S-Class. Did you expect it to be light? 4,610 pounds, or depending on express your weights and measures, 2,091 kilograms. Now something rather pertinent. This is over 600 pounds lighter than the S580 with that sport mode. Oh, wait a minute. You, well, there's a slight noticeable difference, but I think this is a case of less power and less weight balance each other out. Now, yeah, it does pick up a bit more on the nose than the eight cylinder. I think that's because it is 600 pounds lighter and that's all in the front of the car. Other than that, it works well in personality with a nine-speed torque converter automatic. Let's do a little simulated passing, shall we? Low, low, and then hit it. Oh, it's there. Okay, there it is. The delay is when you're going from like 30 to 50 or 50 to 70. There is the difference. Let's try that again. Come down real low here. Let's go below 30. Okay, that's below 30. And punch it from 20. Yeah, that's the difference. Okay, so it's not as immediate. It doesn't have that, that 516 pounds of torque when the car is already rolling, but unusually good from a standing start. Now, putting aside the obvious, the rest of the car pretty much drives the same. That's because underneath, it's the same multi-link front and rear with air ride and torsion bars. And you notice that going through the turns here, you have virtually the same lean. And there, I would argue, one would have to drive this and the S580 back to back to understand the impact of the 600 pound weight delta, at least in terms of driving dynamics, ride quality, and overall body because really just behind the wheel of this thing now, the two drive almost identical. The only thing you notice a difference on, and I can't honestly tell you if there is a difference, the braking here it doesn't feel like it has enough brakes for this kind of immediacy in acceleration. Like for example, I'm gonna hit the brakes a little hard here knowing behind us. And I feel like something's going on here. Maybe it's the lack of maintenance on this car, or maybe it's just not enough stopping power with a 4,610 pound car. Now, in terms of driving dynamics, there is still one party trick we gotta try out, even though it's the same as on the eight cylinder, and that is 
the four wheel steering. This one fitted with the 4.5 degrees of four wheel steering and yeah, <laughs> you just don't notice the 126 wheelbase. Would I like the 10 degree? Yeah, but this is even a couple of steps above most four wheel steering systems because those usually are between one and three degrees. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game, Mind the Options Game, with today's contestant, something that can only be referred to as a more moderate, ostentatious car, this, the Mercedes-Benz S500 for Matic for a base price of $111,100. As a basis of comparison, rather than compare it to the V8, how about comparing it to the Maybach? That is about $70,000 cheaper. Then there's the color. Thankfully, we do not have to pay extra for it. And this emerald green, stunning. Now granted, there are some points where it looks a little bit black, like here, but in the sunlight, it absolutely pops. And let me just say, you and I are gonna be talking about green in the medium term. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Then we go into the interior there. It is a stunning Sienna tan with a black Napa two-tone. This absolutely works perfectly with the green. The contrast here, I could not complain about it in any way, shape, or form. Therefore, I would pay the extra $2,900 for the color and the Napa leather. Then we press on to the trim on the dashboard. No, it's not wood. It's piano lacquer finish, but it has the flowing lines, a very neat touch. I like it with the wood better. So here I wouldn't spend the $1,300. Then this car has the AMG line package, which changes some of the look of the vehicle. That we don't pay extra for. However, we do pay extra for for the 21 inch wheels, $1,950. Now, if we're gonna drop that kind of money on wheels, we might as well augment it with a pseudo body kit. It's not a full AMG body kit. It just changes the front and the back of the vehicle, as well as the side skirts, $4,300. Then the rear wheel steering we have to pay extra for. This is the 4.5 degree steering, well worth it, $1,300. Heated steering wheel, optional in a $111,000 car. $250. Then the active ambient lighting. This, I'm a sucker for this. I would pay the extra $790. Then the 3D system we've talked about in the tech review where the gauges are 3D and that very fancy 43 inch like Costco TV head up display. That is an additional $3,000. And then the only other thing we add is the destination and handling von Sindelfing in Deutschland for $1,050, which brings us to a total retail price of $127,330. Put another way, that is about $15,000 cheaper than the last S580 V8 we had here in the hangar. Now, one interesting but noticeable difference we have to discuss is the way this car is screwed together. This ain't the S580, which means there are some things that are different. Like for example, every S580 you and I have driven, whether it's the base one or the Maybach, it had kind of the suede on the Maybach, a leather headliner. This instead has a cloth headliner, and it's not just the headliner, it's the A pillar, the B pillar, and the C pillar, but it goes a step further. It continues down through the door jams in the back. And that's something that I gotta be honest is what I was looking for in the cheap seats of the S-Class world. Yeah, one could argue this is the way to get an S-Class that's cheaper. And in most cases, a car company may take away things like the headliner or details where you don't see it below your eye line. Okay, so I've presented a very pedantic detail, but what about the rest of the tactile feel, how the thing is screwed together, and especially the stunning color and trim choices in this particular car? They're indistinguishable from any other S-Class, whether it has an eight cylinder, six cylinder, or the coming Maybach 12 cylinder. Actually, you know what, maybe, I've spoken too much. We have to wait on that last one until we actually drive the 12 cylinder Maybach. And so we return to the question from the top of the episode, crappy neighborhood or cheap seats in the fancy neighborhood? And there it's open to one's interpretation of a neighborhood. Is it understated? or is one thinking party neighborhood? In that case, one would need to wait for the upcoming AMG derivation of this or step down to the crappy neighborhood that is the E-Class and party with the E63S. But if it's understated here, 
I am shocked at how close these two vehicles are, where I personally would be hard pressed to write an extra check for the V8. And this is where we get to the wish list. And because it's so close, it's the same request. That UX needs to be fixed. It needs knobs, toggle switches, buttons. And it's not just because of safety, because that is not safe. It's also a way to convey the elegance in the way these vehicles are built. That's one of the huge things this vehicle is currently missing, but I am just one man. And this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I do want to share that I pulled a bit of a trick on you. I am in love with this color and I wanted it to shine here in the hangar. So you may have noticed I put an Alfa Romeo next to this vehicle and that's because the stunning blue, which is unique on that car, usually those things are red or white, sometimes black, but that blue really makes the green shine here in the hangar. Till I see you in the next episode, bish beta.